Hello there and welcome back. Today on the bench we've got a Marconi TF331 which is a uh, distortion factor meter or audio analyzer measures total harmonic distortion from an input range of 1 to 30 volts and from 20 Hz to 20 kilohertz. It can measure down to 0.01% THD with reasonable accuracy. Uh, so let's give it a go. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, it also has a 2RMS um, voltmeter. So let's stick a signal in. And let's take a distortion measurement. Right, so we've got it on the voltmeter at the moment. So we have it on the voltmeter at the moment. Just selected there. And we've got a level set to one volt. So the signal in should be that's one volt about 0 0.6 0 0.6 maybe 0 0.610 something like that. Let's check that out with the HP. Whoops, now we're trying to do a bit in one handed. go 0.597 on the HP so quite accurate right now then. so to make a distortion measurement set this knob to set reference level this one on set reference level now you do need a signal of about 0.6 Alright, yeah, we just need to increase the oscillator a little bit. Yeah, you do need a uh, input level of 0.6 volts. So first we set the reference level with this um, control here. To what we've got 100%. Uh, that's something I forgot to mention. You can either read the result in percentage or in dBm. So we've set a reference level and next we kick in the notch filter and that rejects the fundamental. As you can see we've got an output connected to the scope and so this is what we're seeing without it being nulled. So if I just turn that up a bit there. So to reduce the basically what we've got to do now is to get this needle to reduce. We first start off with this big big control here and that's rejecting that's the notch filter that's rejecting the fundamental Turn the voltmeter level down. It is a little bit fiddly to use when you get further down, but it's not really 100% necessary to get it all the way down because we've got these two controls here that we can further reduce. Now we'll go back on we'll go on to these controls now. We've got a frequency balance. And as you can see as I turn that, that is altering the signal. Turn that and the phase balance. There we go, that's about as far down as we can. Get it? And that's what we're left with. So that is the distortion. You can see it looks like we've got mainly second there with a little bit of third. So now we just read up a result. So we've got 3% here, which is the full scale. So that'll be 3%, 2%, 1%. So we know it's under 1%. These analog meters, are, I find them a little bit tricky to, to read sometimes, but once you've done it a few times the um, 
and add a bit of a practice and then it's not so bad right so we say that that is so we're looking at a total harmonic distortion varying a little bit there uh, we have got a low cut we've got a low cut filter engaged uh, low frequency cut sorry just a tad under one percent and there we go, 1.1%, 1%-ish, 1.1%. So there's going to be a bit of variation, I mean with any bit of test equipment. Um, especially at low levels I've found, both with the HP and with this Marconi um, distortion factor meter, there is a little bit of a difference when you're measuring very low levels. But if we was had this if we were testing an amplifier then the levels are going to be far bigger than 0.6 percent so obviously like at a low voltage there's going to be some noise there oh that's another thing i should point out this thing also can measure noise um it all the um different measurements are fully covered in the manual tells you the principles of measurement goes into a lot of detail as you can see I'll just show you uh, just point you at the at the manual so you can see its specs there we go right shall we try measuring a better signal that's off that oscillator there so this oscillator here if you set it to about three volts goes down very low it has a total harmonic distortion of something like 0.002 i think something like that percent thd it's a very simple wine bridge oscillator using an any 5532 op amp a few resistors I've just got it open at the moment because I've just been tidying it up and making a few changes. Right, so we'll measure the distortion on this one. Set it to... ...100%. Reject the fundamental. So now we've got it on the lowest setting which is 0.1%, so that's 0 0.1, 0 0.09, so we've got 0 0.03, see if we can get that a little bit lower. Obviously we're right down in the noise, you know, noise floor here. We're getting about as low as we can get. This is going to be struggling to... Okay, <coughs> so we're reading something like 0.01% THD. Let's check that with the HP. Yeah, as I said, it goes down very low, 0 0.0026. So obviously, so obviously we've got some discrepancy there. To measure that low, then you need a piece of kit like the H HP 8903B. But that obviously costs a lot more than the Marconi. So for somebody wanting to just you know starting out measuring amplifiers then it's ideal um, I only want 100 quid for it and that's delivered in the UK as compared to the HP and you're looking at around 700 quid ish something like that you might get one cheaper um, so it's it I've had it for about two or three years now and it served me very well in all that time uh, what else to say about it it has various, uh, it has, sorry, it has a couple of um, impedances that can be set to either high impedance or 600 ohm impedance. 
There is an RF testing. It can test RF. Yeah, it goes into the RF measurements here. The built in RF detector stage can accommodate carrier frequencies within the range of 500 kHz to 500 MHz, modulation depths of up to 80%, and levels between 1 volt and 4 volt. The input impedance at the RF detector, which is on the back, is 50 ohms. The RF detector has an addition of a low pass filter which eliminates false readings due to carrier breakdown. It doesn't really go into a lot more details than that. Uh, furthermore to um, the discrepancy between this and the HP, it does go into sources of error in the readings here. So like any bit of test gear, you know, there are possibilities of error with certain signals and things like that. Now it says here you can also use the amplifier used as an amplifier a wave meter. I've already talked about using it as an amplifier. So obviously it's a very low distortion um, amplifier. You can maybe use it for things like RIAA phono stages or something of that nature. And wave meter, yeah. Basically I would think you would use this to null the Null the uh, reading there until you get a very low needle deflection and then read off what we've got here. So, when we um, used it to measure the distortion on this oscillator here, and this gives us a reading, so actually it's over 100 hertz. So, we're looking at that's telling us that the that it's at about 125 hertz. Oh, I can't really check that without putting it on the frequency counter, which is not working at the moment. What else to say? Oh right, yeah. One one important thing about this, a good <coughs> one thing about this is, uh, and I really like to keep it because of this, is this is easy to fix, and the HP isn't. Well, at least for somebody of my level of knowledge, it is geared up to. I can find the drawing. It is geared up to be worked on. And once you've taken this sleeve off and pulled this out and taken the bar off the back, the whole thing folds out on hinges. It's really nicely put together. Nice build quality, good quality components, uh, like the HB334 meters. But obviously it doesn't have the automatic function. Actually I found this easier to use than the HP but maybe that's just me. As I said once, you, once you've done the yurt, uh, once you've used it a few times it's very easy to use and I've tested quite a few amplifiers, uh, the big mono blocks that I had there on the, uh, in the video like a, a while back and uh, pre-amplifiers and god knows what. This would be ideal for testing um, valve or tube amplifiers. I mean, if you can get a valve amplifier that's um, with a total harmonic distortion reading of less than one percent, not point not one percent, then you've you know you've designed a good amplifier. Right, I'm just waffling now. I think that's all there is to be said about it, really. As I said, I'm going to put this on uh, DIY audio at first. Under quid delivered in the UK. If you're interested, drop me a PM on there, or you can contact me through my email address that's uh, somewhere on the YouTube page. I think it's in the About section. As always, thank you for watching, and bye for now.